Sarah from Rayco and today I want to talk about the first steps in manually setting up a Rayco module dimming system. Once the modules are all wired up and connected, the first step is what we call addressing or what might be called assigning the modules individual numbers. Now before we get going, let me just point out one important thing. Straight out of the box, all our keypads and dimmer modules should work together in their default setting. It won't be doing what you want, but it will give you basic on-off control. If you're not getting this basic control, then you've got wiring or product issues that need fixing before you move on to the next stage. Now, on our newer modules, we've got this test button, and pressing this button gives us manual on-off control of our lighting, but also pressing and holding this button is how we put the module into its setup mode. One more important thing to note is that there's a blue LED behind this button, and the way this LED flashes gives us loads of feedback if we know what we're looking for. Now, when we're addressing a system, this is the basic structure we're aiming for. Firstly, house number. Now, if this is my project, we need to give this a house number, which is different from any other neighbouring houses, or there's going to be a danger of interference from, or interference with, the next project. Now, it doesn't really matter which house number we choose, but don't just leave it as house one. In this case, we're going to call our house number 57. And we want to keep everything in our project as house 57, so that any master commands or smartphone control we may want to add later will work. Okay, so now we need to pick individual room numbers, and here we have a lounge and a dining room, which I'm going to number room 5 and room 6. And finally, each room might well have a number of individual circuits, which also need to be numbered. So in my lounge, I'm going to have a pendant, which I'm going to call channel number 1, wall lights, channel 2, and spotlights, channel 3. Now the addresses for the house and room numbers are set on the back of the wall plate here with these switches setting the house and these the room addresses. Straight from the factory, all products are set as house one and this is great for the initial test, but if you leave your system as house one, you risk interference, so change it. So for my example, I'm setting house 57, which is actually a combination of switches giving us a binary number. You don't really need to know about binary, just pick a combination, but if you are interested, just look at the link under useful information on our website. We now need to set the room number and here room 5 in binary is actually switch 3 and 1 set to on. You cannot use room 0 to address a dimmer. OK, so we've got a plate set with a new house and room number. What we've got to do now is assign our dimmer modules to this new wall plate address, but additionally give the modules individual circuit or channel numbers so that we can set them with different dimming levels later when we come to set the scene. To address the dimmer, we need to put the keypad into programming mode, and we do that by pressing and holding one of the numbered scene buttons. In this case, two, and then the raised lower buttons as well. After about five seconds, the LED on the front starts to flash. Release the buttons, and the LED should continue to flash on its own. As soon as the wall plate enters programming mode, the function of its buttons change. The keypad always enters programming mode at channel zero. Now we can't set a dimmer module's number zero, so pressing button number one steps the wall plate up by one channel. So if we press button one once, the wall plate is ready to talk to channel one. We can now go to the module that we want to make dimmer number one. Press and hold the test button, and after a few seconds, the blue LED inside will start to flash. We can now release the button, and again, the internal LED should keep flashing on its own. Button three sends the address of the wall plate to the dimmer module. The module's LED will drop out of setup mode and its internal LED will stop flashing. When it's in programming mode, every time we press button 1 on the keypad, it steps up by one channel. So if we have another module to address in the room, we press the button 1 again and the wall plate steps up to channel 2. We can now go to the module we want to make channel 2. Press and hold the test button. and press 3 on the wall plate. Once we've addressed all the dimmers in the room, we can press off on the wall plate and come out of programming mode. OK, so all of the dimmers should now have been given an individual address and be controlled from the keypad. Now at this point, it doesn't appear like we've achieved very much, but with individual addresses set, we can now move on to program some scene levels. Before we do so, which is covered in the video manually programming a scene, it's worth checking that we really have got everything right so far. Now at this point, it's worth talking a bit about the LED inside the dimmer module. Firstly, it flickers every time it sees a message from a Rayco device. It doesn't matter if it's programmed to respond to that device, it just flickers. So if you have a dimmer which flickers but doesn't do anything, it's probably not been addressed correctly. 
If there's no flickering at all, then it's not seeing any message, so it might be a wiring problem or a range issue. Now this feature does time out after about an hour or so to stop the LED being annoying if it's mounted somewhere visible. So if you think that might have happened, just press the test button to wake it up again. When a module is addressed to a wall plate, if that wall plate goes into programming mode, the module's internal LED will start to pulse too. Another useful feature of the LED is that as I step through my channels on a wall plate by pressing button one, if a module is already addressed to that channel, its internal LED will give a short but steady glow rather than the flicker, as well as the connected load flashing. So taking this example of four modules, which I think I've addressed as channels one to four, I'm not in programming mode at the moment, but if I press a button, I can see that all four dimmer LEDs flicker, so all good so far. When I go into programming mode, I should now expect to see all four dimmers LEDs start to pulse. And that's not quite happening. Three are, but one isn't. Okay, so knowing that a wall plate always goes into programming mode as channel zero, I can step through my circuits one by one, looking at either the connected loads or the internal LEDs. So press button one once, and the wall plate steps up to channel one, and this module flashes the load and its LED, which as we can see glows solid rather than flickering. I'll just show you that again. Press button one again, and the wall plate steps up to channel two, and this module flashes and the internal LED glows. Now button three sends an ident command, but doesn't step up or down a channel. So if I wasn't sure if I'd seen channel two flashing, I could check by pressing button three, and again. Okay, so now we press button one to move up again, hopefully to channel three, and oh, nothing. Again, if I want to double check, I can press button three, but still nothing. Okay, and press button one again, and this module responds as I hoped. So it looks like I've got one, two, and four addressed properly, but not three. I can check by stepping back down using button two. Still no three, circuit two good, and one. So let's go back up to channel three two and three. And now press the test button on the module. Hold it and press button three to send the address. Okay, and exit. And let's quickly check that. Into programming mode. One, two, three, and four. Looks good. Press off and exit setup mode. So we've checked and everything's good. Before I go, I'm just going to mention two other points. Firstly, the power up mode changes when we change the house address of a dimmer. Out of the box, the dimmer will power up to full, which is great for checking the initial installation, but not so good if you come back from holiday to find there's been a power cut and all your lights have been left on. So when you change the house address, the modules automatically change to power up mode off. Secondly, the automatic timeouts. To stop being able to leave a dimmer or keypad stuck in the setup mode, they will time out after about three minutes. Now, if you get halfway through and get interrupted or confused and you think part of the system might have timed out, then press off on the keypad and the test button on the module and come out of setup, then go back in. If you don't, you can get in a situation where half the system is set up, half not, and it all gets out of sync. Anyway, we should all be ready to program some lighting levels. Thanks for watching.